I saw this as losing this wonderful opportunity that we had really invested a great deal in the infrastructure, in the technology. It was like the rug was pulled out. They gave it away. And it, to me, that's just sad. It's a sad commentary on the way our society and our system in, in the United States works. When GM introduced the EV1, California was setting the toughest auto pollution standards in the nation. 10% of all cars sold here this year were to be zero emission vehicles. But California dropped those standards after being sued by automakers. But a lot of the vehicles, the Honda vehicles, the General Motors vehicles, were all leased and nobody had the option to buy. So the automakers took advantage of that and pulled all the cars off the road. They weren't willing to let people take the cars and actually drive them and keep driving them like normal cars. I tell you, when I noticed that GM was losing interest was when I wanted to release my car and they wouldn't let me. I've never had a product I've had to beg and fight and, and uh, cajole and persist so much to get and then had to try and beg and, and fight and find any way possible to try and keep. Well, they, they did not they give me the option They didn't to give buy. me an option to buy. They said, thank you for leasing the car. Turn Bye -bye. it in now. Turn it in That's by it. such and such a date, or you're going to be held liable. GM had very quietly gone about taking cars back without anybody saying very much, other than some of the drivers that complained about having their cars taken away, but never in a big organized fashion. So they had no choice but to turn them in or you know, face the legal consequences of basically stealing a car. To my knowledge, all the cars were turned in because people had too much to lose. To this day, the automakers have fought anyone actually understanding how much demand there was and how much demand that there is. And so we decided we were going to fight them in whatever way we could, and we became organizers. Across California, drivers held protests to save electric cars. I turned my head around about electric cars, and it broke me of my addiction to oil. Unable to change policy, activists staged a funeral to raise public awareness. It was the same month as the first stage one smog alert in Southern California in five years. I was an EV1 driver, still am, from 1998 until December of this year when GM will have to pry it out of my charger's dead cold hands. <laughs> what the detractors and the critics of electric vehicles have been saying for years is true. The electric vehicle is not for everybody. Given the limited range, it can only meet the needs of 90% of the population. People used to ask me, why do you do what you do? And I, especially after I had my son told them, I figure if I do my job well enough, my son will never know a time before there were electric cars on the road. And he rode in an EV1 on the way over here and he said, I wish we could keep the EV1 for a long time. And all I could say was, me too. By the summer of 2004, there was only a single EV1 left in private hands in Southern California. Today is D-Day. Today is the end. GM did do it right. They did create a great, great car. It's well engineered, it's well designed, and it's enjoyable to drive. I've never seen a company be so cannibalistic about its own product before. It's, it's, it's such an odd experience. Just in time. I know, I see that. So sad. Oh. 
This is the EV specialist I was talking about who gave me her car. Completely <laughs> sad, heartbroken. Are you kidding me? They're my babies. Every one of them. A lot of, a lot of human potential just drove off. The fight continues. It does. With no more electric cars on the road, General Motors now had possession of their entire EV1 fleet. Why did they want them back? What were they going to do with these cars? We had discovered 78 EV1s parked in the back parking lot of a facility that GM owns in Burbank. But taking off the cars that were on the road, that were running fine, just let those people drive those cars until they can't drive them anymore. Where are you guys from? Uh, we're Hi. members of the EV1 Club, and EV1 we want to come and take a look at our cars. I know they're being mothballed here. Yeah, I have no authorization for you guys to come back there and look at the cars. Can we just go and, like... No. There were no clues as to where the cars were going until a rumor surfaced on the Internet. We had the understanding uh, through back channels that these vehicles were about to be taken to the Arizona Proving Grounds. Many EV1s had apparently been trucked out of state to GM's vast proving grounds in Mesa, Arizona. It's so large and it has the track denoted on it. The location was off limits to the public, and there was no way of knowing where the EV1s might be. General Motors, and looking down, we could see right next to the racetrack where the EV1 was first tested, we saw, I don't know, maybe 50 EV1s uh, crushed and put on top of semi flatbeds right next to the yellow crusher. General Motors is almost finished off, I think. I don't imagine there's very many EV1s left that haven't been, been crushed down. It's pretty sad. They're one of four things that will happen with the EV1s. They'll go to colleges and universities, to engineering schools. They'll go to museums and other displays across the country. Other EV1 vehicles are being driven by our engineers, and the other option for the EV1s at the end of their life is recycling. But know that every, one, every part of the EV1 is going to be recycled, dismantled through a third party, and then reused. Everything is going to be recycled. We're not just going to crush it and send it off to a landfill. When I saw the picture of the pile of crushed cars, uh, it, it hurt. And I, you know, I thought it was uh, pretty spiteful. To see on the, um, you know, on the computer, on the inter internet, the, the crushed EV1s that GM did. It was, it was wrong, tragic. it was, was wrong. Tragic. But more wrong is the reasons for it. All of a sudden, we were sort of left at odds, you know, what do we do now? And at the time that most of this was going on, no one had any idea that every automaker was going to jump ship. More internet tips revealed that the EV1s were not the only electric vehicles in jeopardy. A number of Ford Thinks and Ranger electric trucks were discovered in Palm Springs and rumored to be set for destruction. In Los Angeles, activists spotted a truckload of Toyota RAV4 EVs. Fearing the destination was a crushing facility, they chased it. The next morning, the truck turned back. That guy was going as fast as he possibly could in a big transport like that, trying to lose us, it was clear, but wasn't able to do it. And of course, that did change Toyota's plans. It was so inconsistent, they didn't know what the hell to do. Then he goes to the end of the pier, and these two big security guards come out. They open this locked gate. Truck goes inside, and, and then the security guards come out and surveil us. 
Somehow we ended up at, at this godforsaken place. Which has everything. It has spewing smoke into the harbor that kids have to breathe. It has an oil well, and it has Toyota, which is supposed to be the greenest car company, but which is simultaneously crushing and hiding the fact that they're crushing clean RAV4 EVs instead of selling them to willing customers. No one had seen Honda's electric cars since they were taken from customers. Then, an episode of California's Green aired on PBS. So we're going to be able to see cars shredded today. Absolutely. Which is not something most of us get to see. We shred the car, about a car a minute, 1,000 cars a day on a good day. And what's interesting, the first thing we noticed when we drove up here, you're going to be shredding some new cars here, too. These look like perfectly good cars. Why are you shredding them up? A uh, little bit of a mystery, really, since I've been here the last eight years. They bring us these cars from the dealerships, and they say that they're test cars, and they've been brought over to, to test various emissions, and the insurance companies won't reinsure them, so they have to watch them destroyed here. Boy, that seems like a shame. It's I a could, terrible I could, I'd like to drive off in one of these things. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the sound of a crushed automobile being shredded into a million pieces. There's no precedent for a car company rounding up every one of a particular kind of car and crushing them as if they're afraid one might get away. I don't think they wanted to be sure that none of them were driving around the streets anymore to remind people that there is such a thing as an electric car. People keep making all these analogies about, you know, crushing the EV is a betrayal of the American dream. It's not a dream. I mean, it's here now. It may be a betrayal of my dream, <laughs> but it's a betrayal of the American reality. After the discovery of the crushed EV1s in Arizona, electric car drivers took action. They vowed to keep watch over the remaining EV1s being stored at the GM facility in Burbank. There are about 70 cars left in California. They're in the parking lot behind me, and they have plans to crush those as well. And we need to make a call to action on General Motors to give them back. You know, we ended up rallying enough troops in terms of interest and organizations to join our coalitions and then simply didn't leave and stayed, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's uh, 6 a.m. and I've been here for an hour, part of the vigil. We're making sure that GM doesn't sneak out their cars in the back lot. The first two weeks, we were pretty much ignored. It was uh, monsoon rains and it was kind of depressing to be out there, but at the same time, there was such a sense of mission. I was here this morning from about 5.45 a.m. and, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty quiet. Finally, on day 15, we did this announcement of this offer. Of As the EV activist recorded the VIN numbers of the cars in storage, Chelsea led a last-ditch effort to buy the cars from GM. Okay, General Motors contends that no one wants these EV1s here. Would anybody be willing to buy them for the residual price of the lease? And within 48 hours, over 80 people had signed up. And there were only 78 cars in that lot, and already we had a waiting list for a car that wasn't available. I mean, it was a tremendous deja vu moment. <laughs> so at this point, we thought it would be appropriate <laughs> to come full circle, join me in holding this check, offering $1.9 million to General Motors to put these cars back on the road. Despite the offer, GM did not respond. The fate of the last 78 EV1s remained in doubt. A small group of activists would continue their vigil to keep the dream of the electric car alive.